Kohala Yahawa, Bashum Yahweh Shai, Bashum, Rakakwa Dash, Shalawam, to my hopeful, you like elder brother over here in my congregation, Sharayad, Shalawam, to all you hopeful, you like elders out there who rule well, those of you of the Israelite nation, namely the hopeful, you like elders over at the Great Millstone Church. Peace and many blessings be to all you hopeful, you like men out there, those of you scattered amongst the earth. Diligently laboring, bringing forth the true doctrine of Yahweh Ba'ashem Yahweh Shai, namely the hopeful elect brothers that I personally labor with. Peace and many blessings be likewise to the rest of the one third out there, all you true believers of the Israelite nation. Second Ezra chapter 15, verse 1 Behold, speak thou in the ears of my people the words of prophecy. So before I continue, this video is out to the hopeful elect out there, the Israelite nation. The Israelite nation today being known as so-called black people, which consists of you so-called Negroes, so-called Latinos, and so-called Native American and Seminole Indian people. You are all, in fact, the Israelites according to the scriptures, which are God's chosen people. And you are who this message is to. And the Lord says, speak thou in the ears of my people, you Israelites, so-called black people, the words of prophecy. And it's important to understand prophecy because prophecy are things that are to come. Things that the Lord said will happen that will go forth to play out here on earth. So it's important to know what's going on so you can prepare yourselves and be on the right side of all that is to come. And it says, which I will put in thy mouth, said the Lord. And cause them to be written in paper, for they are faithful and true. So these words being written in paper is us having this Bible, a complete Bible, which includes the Apocrypha. And these words are faithful and true. So it's important to know what's going on in these scriptures. Because they're going to show you how to escape the things that are coming to this earth and to be on the right side of prophecy. And that's ultimately what the hopeful elect would be doing right now. They will be in preparation for these things to come. Thus them repenting back to our true power, being the heavenly father, Yahweh Ba'ashem Yahweh Shai, simply being the heavenly father's true name, Yahweh, in the name of his son, Yahweh Shai, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus. And going forth to convert, completely restart, walking according to truth, restart our lives and we walk in according to the true doctrine of this Bible. Simply put, applying what we are learning and building upon this daily. Verse 3 says, Fear not the imaginations against thee. And the imaginations that have been set against us is the current rulers that be of this earth being the wicked who we know today as the so-called white man whose true identity is Esau according to the scriptures. His imaginations are what's plaguing the world at current. His imaginations is what has you Israelites calling yourselves black, Indians, Latinos, and not knowing that you're the Israelites. His imagination is what as you believing that the so-called white man is the supreme being and that he's supposed to rule over you and that you're supposed to accept that he has you in his full system, which he calls the school system, learning his pledge of his allegiance and keeping you completely out of the know of who your power is. And the imaginations go so far to the food that you eat, the water that you drink, things that you believe in, the philosophies, Christianity, so-called Jesus, all of these things, man, these are the imaginations that have been set against you to keep you away from being in your true estate, which is being an Israelite, knowing who you are and serving your God, our God, who is Yahweh Ba'ashem Yahweh Shai. It says, let not the incredulity of them trouble thee that speak against thee. When we go into incredulity, I got the word put up here. It says the state of being unwilling or unable to believe something. So many of our nation, 
so-called black people, they don't believe the words of this prophecy because this word is being preached worldwide. Men are hitting the highways and hedges day in and day out, bringing forth lessons on the world wide web. Videos just bringing forth this truth, exposing the current world to be the world of the so-called white man, who is the devil that the Bible speaks of and proving that the so-called white man is the devil. It says, let not the incredulity of them trouble thee that speak against thee. Because there's going to be many against us, many against his word until it all comes out and reveals itself to be true. But once again, the elect will hear these words and they will follow. And the two thirds of the Israelite nation are written to be destroyed for their unbelief. As is going on to say here, it says, for all the unfaithful shall die in their unfaithfulness. So them who don't believe, they're going to die for not aligning themselves up with reality and coming out of this current world. They're walking according to truth. Verse 5 says, Behold, said the Lord, I will bring plagues upon the world, which we have seen completely play out in the last few here, years here on this earth. So that's completely clear that the Lord's word does not go out vain. It says the sword, and the sword is a, what, a killing instrument, and the sword is played out in many different ways through people killing each other, you know, with guns, through food being um pretty much poisoned, through water being poisoned, through air being poisoned, through the philosophies that are pushed upon these people. It's just a sickness. It says famine, and famine is simply the lack of something. We've seen a lack of food being distributed amongst the earth because it's not a lack of food, but it's a lack of distribution because the powers that be, the global elite has set these things up to be. It says death and destruction, which if you turn on the news and you just pay attention, is on an all-time high compared to time and past being. Death and destruction is prevalent, but we're in the beginning of sorrow, so it's more to come. These things will be ramped up. But we are seeing all these things play out. It says, for wickedness hath exceedingly polluted the whole earth. Right? The wicked has the earth in his hands. So the wickedness has, the wickedness has completely, exceedingly polluted the earth. Those imaginations, the so-called white man and his imaginations, all played out throughout the earth. It's polluting this place. And it's destroying many of you Israelites. Let's get this. The book of Micah chapter 2 and verse 10. That's why it says, Arise ye and depart. You're being commanded to arise and depart out of this place, first and foremost, spiritually, in your mind. Learn this truth. Come back to who you are. Serve our power. Learn how to walk according to these scriptures. Or learn according to the true doctrine of the Bible. It says, For this is not your rest. For you Israelites, this isn't your place of rest. Even if you make a come up here, this isn't your place of rest. Our nation is destroyed from being intermingled into this current world, the so-called white man's world. Our place of rest is not here, but the world that is to come, the kingdom of heaven being here on earth. It says because it's polluted, this place is polluted. That's why you got to get up out of it. And it says it's exceedingly polluted. So it's over polluted. It says it shall destroy you even with a sore destruction, because you have to understand that these scriptures are speaking to the Israelites specifically. So it's you that is being spoken to. It's going to destroy you with a sword of destruction if you don't come out of it. Second Edges 15 and 6, For wickedness has exceedingly polluted the whole earth, and their hurtful works are fulfilled. Yeah, the hurtful works, the so-called white man's his works are getting to a point where it's going to be completely fulfilled. And once again, I said these things are happening, but it's not completely on high all the way as it will be. The so-called white man is going to come completely down with all his imaginations. Let's come here to Second Ezra chapter 4. We're going to start like at 26. Yeah, it says, then answer he me and said, the more thou searchest, the more thou shalt marvel. For the world hasted fast to pass away. So when you actually consider what's truly going on, you actually starting to see clearly that this place is on its way out. And it says the world, the current world that, that be hasted fast to pass away. So this place is on its way out. 
the rulership of the so-called white man is on its way out and it's hastening fast. It says, and cannot comprehend the things that are promised to the righteous in time to come. In our world, in this world so polluted, basically, you can't even truly comprehend what a kingdom actually looks like. That's going to be for the righteous. Once again, the elect, first and foremost, of the Israelite nation. And actually going to go to further beyond the whole nation of Israel in due time. But first and foremost, the elect will receive that. And we can't even truly imagine the beauty of us having a kingdom and, ru and ruling and governing according to righteousness, according to the law, statutes, and commandments of Yahweh Basham, Yahweh Shai. That's the world that's to come. It says, for this world is full of unrighteousness and infirmities. And the point is here, it says, but as concerning the things whereof thou askest me, I will tell thee, for the evil is sown, right? The evil is planted. It says, but the destruction thereof is not yet come. So that seed's planted, but it hasn't popped up yet. You know, sometimes it takes some time for a seed to bud. That's what we're waiting for. The so-called white man to come fully on and expose himself and show that he is the devil that the Bible speaks of. So let's hop back, 2nd Ezra chapter 15. In verse 6, it says, For wickedness hath exceedingly polluted the whole earth, and their hurtful works are fulfilled. So yeah, their work has been fulfilled. It just hasn't budded all the way just yet. But it's going to happen that, that evil has been sown. It says, Therefore, saith the Lord, I will hold my tongue no more as touching their wickedness. So the Heavenly Father is not going to hold his tongue anymore. and He's going to completely expose these devils. And as the scripture says in the book of Amos, surely the Lord will do nothing, but he revealed his secret unto his service, the prophets. And the prophets go forth to bring forth this word. Once again, men in the highways and hedges worldwide, bringing forth videos and lessons worldwide daily. This thing is going to come to pass. These prophecies are going to come to pass. These things have to be spoken. And it says, which they profanely commit. Yeah, they do it publicly. They do it openly. It says, neither will I suffer them in those things in which they wickedly exercise themselves. So they do these things and the Lord is not going to happen no more. It says, behold, the innocent and righteous blood crieth unto me and the souls of the just complain continually. Yes, people here on this earth who are fed up with this place. We don't want to be here. We want to see that salvation. We want to see the so-called white man's world destroyed. We want to see an end to this place, man. But we know it's going to happen in due time. We have to stay steadfast in this faith, be faithful to, uh, to the Lord, and get ourselves prepared for that day. Ezekiel 9 and 4 says, And the Lord, Yahweh Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, said unto him, Go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem. Jerusalem being a people before it's a place. So talking about the Israelites, it says, and set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and that cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. So as men that sighing and crying for the abominations that's happening here on this earth, you know, they are fed up with this place. Behold, the innocent and righteous blood cried unto me and the souls of the just complain continually. And I was continuing second Edges 15 and 8. Verse 9 says, and therefore said the Lord, I will surely avenge them. So the Lord is going to avenge the righteous. He's not going to let the wicked continue just stumping us out, man, and ruling over us in wickedness. He says, and receive unto me all the innocent blood from among them. He's going to repay those who led into slavery, into captivity by leading them into captivity. And repay them who kill with the sword by killing them with the sword. That's the patience and the faith of the saints. Paraphrasing the scripture. It says, behold, my people is led as a flock to the slaughter. That's how the Israelites are set up today. A flock to the slaughter. Not knowing who they are. Being set up with all of these philosophies. The imagination of the so-called white man eating of his table. And being set up just to be destroyed. By not departing from this place. Arising. It says, I will not suffer them now to dwell in the land of Egypt, but the Heavenly Father is not going to suffer us to stay here. And the land of Egypt is simply a land of slavery, captivity. Namely, according to the scriptures, this place that we call today America, which is spiritual Egypt. 
a place where a majority of the Israelites are still today in the hands of their enemies. Verse 11 says, but I will bring them with a mighty hand and stretched out arm and smite Egypt with plagues. So once again, Egypt being America, he's smiting his place with plagues as before, as he did in ancient Egypt. Clearly suggesting that this is talking about the current Egypt, spiritual Egypt, America, and will destroy all the land thereof. And this is in line with what it's saying in the book of Amos 9 and 8. The Lord has his eyes on the sinful kingdom. America, this is the sinful kingdom, the place that the global elite set up as their stumping grounds to perpetuate wickedness amongst the earth. And it says he will destroy it off the face of the earth. Verse 12 says, Egypt shall mourn and the foundation of it shall be smitten with the plague and punishment that the heavenly father shall bring upon it. They that till the ground shall mourn for their seed shall fail through and the and blasting in hell and with a fearful constellation because the Lord is going to destroy this place by nuclear fire. Once again, that evil has been sown. Those nukes are created. They're going to be shot to this place called America and destroy it off the face of the earth. But it's more. The so-called white man is going to come down with his great wrath, which we'll get before we close out. But I'm going to read verse 14 first. It says, woe to the world and them that dwell therein. So it's woe to the people that are intermingled into this place and don't want to leave it. Woe to you, meaning destruction. So we are closed out in the book of Revelation. In the 12th chapter, in the 12th verse. It says, therefore, rejoice ye heavens and ye that dwell in them. The heavens are rejoicing because these are the hopeful elect, those who have their mind on the heavens. Though we be here still in the physical and though we have to endure in this place until the very end, we have converted our minds into what the true doctrine of the Bible is saying and we are walking accordingly in a way that's going to allow us to be escaped. Therefore, rejoicing is there because we want this place to be destroyed off the face of the earth. We want the Lord to correct this place. And we want to see that salvation too. And we know our kingdom will be here on earth, which is the kingdom to come. Therefore, rejoice ye heavens and ye that dwell in them. Woe, once again that word, woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. Remember, you were told to arise and depart out of this place. Because it's not your rest. So woe to those who are still attached to this place. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devil has come down unto you having great wrath. And he's going to have great wrath. That evil that's sown, you're going to see it completely bud. You're going to see all those guillotines come out. You're going to see the FEMA roundup camps. Those stormtroopers come down, those storms, them floods come in. And it's going to all happen. And those of you who didn't want to believe this word, you're not going to be prepared. Or who wasn't written to believe this word, you're not going to be prepared. And it says, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time, which is simply implying that woe, which is his destruction, his end, the end of his world, the end of the so-called white man's world, and the beginning of the world where Israel rules here on earth in righteousness, according to the law, statutes, and commandments of the Heavenly Father. Under our Lord, Yahweh Shai. So, with that, I'm just going to say, Lord willing, this was edifying. Call Allah Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. Shalom.